Hi everyone, in today's video I'm just going to show you a piece of software that I've been using for some time now. So this is a free piece of software, it's available for Windows and Mac OS, so a computer based Mac if you like, so not iPad or iPhone and it's completely free and it seems to work perfectly fine. I've been using it probably for over seven months now and I wanted to kind of, you know, try it out before I posted anything about it here on my YouTube channel. You know, some of you may already use it, some of you may not know about it. Leave me a comment underneath the video if you use it or if you didn't know about it or if you like it. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, basically I have a folder that I created on my computer just called embroidery and within that folder I keep other folders. So I've broken my embroidery design down into folders. So I've got things like, you know, in the hoop projects are all in one folder. I've got a folder that are, you know, for maybe say animals, I've got a folder for something else. They're all, but they're all in one folder called embroidery. I'm just going to open my embroidery file on my computer and this is how it looks. So as you can see here, I've got the main folder called embroidery and then I've created folders inside with all different things in. So if I go to the in the hoop various and I double click on that, within that I've got all kinds of different in the hoop stitch files. If I go to my stitch outs, in here I've got, again, I've got some folders that I've got designs in that I've got, you know, multiple designs to them. And then I've got individual PES so that's the brother format stitch files but you know you could use the genome machine and still be able to use this piece of software it's just that I use PES so for instance in here these are kind of stored I think in alphabetical order this one here bunny with glasses this is one that I used recently in a video on my YouTube channel and I stitched it out and I made it into a cushion but when I open my embroidery file, this is how it looks. So if I can't remember what that looks like, or I've downloaded some files, you know, that I get free from Creative Fabrica, and I put them into the respective folder, thinking, oh, I'll use them at some point in the future. And then six months down the line, I look in the folder and think, what is Choose Your Weapon, for instance? I can't tell because this is how I view it on my computer. So I'll just close that down. So... If you come to this website, it's called twostitch.com and the piece of software is Two Stitch Organizer. So I'll just go back to Google and I'll just start to type in Two Stitch Organizer. Now it's showing up because I've already searched for it this morning to make sure that, you know, it is still available. But, but it should come up in a Google search. So Two Stitch Organizer, enter. And it's generally the first one that comes up. You can see it says here, Two Stitch Organizer, and it's from www.twostitch.com. So I'll select that, and it brings you back to this page that you've just been looking at. And like I say, it's completely free. So you download it either for Mac OS, so a computer-based computer Mac, or it's also available for Windows. So basically download whichever version you want to use and then you just install it on your computer. And when it's installed, this here, this two in this like multicolored circle is the icon that will be on your computer somewhere. So I'm just gonna close this down I've got mine saved in the dock along the bottom of my computer, but you can't see it at the moment. So I'm just going to close that down and then I'm going to open Two Stitch Organizer. You may not see anything here because obviously I've dragged in my embroidery folder. But basically this is what you'll see, this, this window. And it initially says to you, I think from memory when I first started using it, add a folder. And all as I did, I selected add folder and I navigated on my computer to where my embroidery file is kept. And I chose that embroidery file and I chose open. I'm not going to do that now because I've already got it. And once I did that, this is what appeared here. So you can see it says embroidery and there's a little arrow. And that arrow indicates that there's more within here. 
Now, if you use windows, you might not see an arrow, you might see a plus. I'm not sure. You may see an arrow, it might be a plus. But whatever it is, you select on it. And once you select whatever folder you've, you know, opened within this program, everything that's in that folder will show up. So if I now go to my stitch outs, which is what I was looking at a few minutes ago with you, again, you can see there's an arrow. So that means there's several things within this folder. But within that my stitch out folder, there were folders, but there were also individual stitch outs. So if I click on the words my stitch out, it will now show me all the stitch files that are in that folder and here is bunny cushion resized so if I go back to my embroidery file and go to my stitch outs and look for bunny with glasses resized that's how it normally looks to me if I just open up my normal embroidery folder but if I open it in stitch to organizer I can actually see what it looks like so it's brilliant so from here, what you can do, I've already got, I'm going to choose something different because this may actually already be on my USB stick, which I've got plugged in here. You can see I also call my USB stick embroidery. And then that way I know I'm only putting embroidery files on it, although occasionally I do put um, an FCM file on it if it's an applique going with a stitch file if that makes sense but I kind of like to keep my USB sticks named and then I know that I'm only using a specific USB for a particular thing so let's go back and let's look at something else so let's go to let's see what's in gnomes so within my gnomes folder as you can see I've got all these gnomes now, what you can also do when you're in here, at the top it says file type, and by default it's set to any, but if you only want to look for, say, a brother file, a PES file, or you only want to look for, if you use a Janome, a JEF file, you can filter once you're in here. So if I click on the downward arrow and click PES, it will now only show me the brother PES embroidery files that are in this folder so that's really useful if I used a Janome machine I could choose Janome if I used a Janome machine I could change it to Janome and then that way it would only show me the, the Janome files and that's really useful because sometimes you'll download a folder from the internet and there might be lots of different um, sizes or styles of design within one folder and you can get bogged down looking through if I change this back to any you know you can get bogged down looking through like you've got DST EXP HUS which is Husqvarna and you can just get a bit bogged down looking for files so you can filter <clears throat> you can also filter by maximum size although I never use that you can also search um, by text so let's just try flowers and hit enter and see if it brings me anything up so there's nothing called flowers in this folder so it's not bringing anything up so if I just x out of that it just brings me back to all <clears throat> the stitch files that are in this one folder so it's 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 a really really useful piece of kit particularly as it's free so let me just let me just find so I don't think um, I'll stick with gnomes I'll use this Husqvarna file as a, an example because I don't use Husqvarna and I know there's going to be no Husqvarna file on my USB stick so let's say you now want to you've decided that you know, you want to use a, a Husqvarna file, let's say, and you want to put it onto your USB stick to, to then, you know, in turn, put that onto your embroidery machine. So like I say, I've got my USB stick already inserted into my Mac. So I'm going to click on it to select it. And you know it's selected because the strap at the bottom that you can see here is like a, a pale grey turns to this kind of like blue colour. So with this selected, all I have to do now is go up to the top where it says transfer to machine. 
And because I've got my USB stick, which is called embroidery, already inserted into my Mac computer, it's found it instantly for me. And if I click copy, that Husqvarna stitch file has now gone to my USB stick. So I can just right click and eject the USB stick, wait for the icon to disappear off my desktop, then I know it's safely ejected, then I can take that out and put it in my machine, my embroidery machine. So if I double click this now to show you, I've got my files within this folder filtered by kind. And if you look here now, you'll see gnome01.husk. So it's transferred it from here to my USB stick for me, which is brilliant. As many of you know, if you follow my channel, I use Embrilliance Essential software. So let's say I wanted to open this file in Embrilliance because I maybe want to add a name or I want to, you know, get rid of the bees or something like that. So if with this file still selected, if I right click, now this works on a Mac. I don't know if this works on Windows, but you can try it. If I right click, you'll see here it says reveal in Finder. Now bear in mind, I've not got Embrilliance Essentials open. I've only got this program opened and I've got my USB embroidery stick showing. And the only other thing I've got opened is um, my QuickTime player because that's what I'm using to do this screen record. So if I choose reveal in, in Finder, it automatically opens this folder that's in my embroidery file and it selects the file for me. So all as I have to do now is double click on that and it puts it into my Embrilliance Essentials window. So from here, I can then choose to, you know, add, add some text if I want. And then I can go file and save stitch file, etc. And I can put that on my USB stick and stitch it out. So how cool is that? I don't want to save that at the moment because I'm, I'm, you know, I don't need to use it. So let's go back to my stitch outs. And this is another design that I've stitched out recently on a tea towel. I can't remember whether I did a video on this or not. I may have done a TikTok or something like that. So again, I've got no. I've got nothing else opened. I've not got Embrilliance Essential opened. It's down here in the in the in the in my dock, but it's not opened. So again, if I select this and then go right click reveal in Finder, it automatically jumps to where that file is saved on my computer. So it's in my stitch outs, which is in my embroidery file, but it's chosen the actual file for me. So again, if I double click, it will open it in essentials. So if I want to open it and do something to it, I can do, I can do it that way. If I literally know this is the file I want, I just go transfer to machine, make sure my USB stick is plugged in, and then I copy it over like I've just shown you with the other file. So I'm not going to copy it over because I'm not sure if it's already in here. So let me just move this over a little bit and I'll just expand the window. So again, when you select a file, so let's just choose your weapon. You can see here it gives you the file name. It gives you the design size, which it already shows you down here, 4.9 inches by 4.8 inches. It tells you how many stitches. It tells you how many colors are used you can add notes in here if you want so if you've got this from you know say creative fabrica you can put creative fabrica in here if you want so that if you forget where it's from you've always got a note or you can just make other notes you know this was a good stitch out or i liked this or used for whatever drag this out a little bit and then it will show you all the colours. So it says here that it's 16 colours. And at the bottom, you can move these up or down to make them bigger or smaller, by the way. Um, it will show you the 16 colours. What happens if you add more stitch files to your 
original embroidery folder. So let's just go back to my embroidery folder. I'm trying to think of something I've not got in here. So this is my embroidery folder on my computer. And as you can see, as I say, I've kind of got my things broken down into things that make sense for me. You don't have to do this. It's entirely up to you. A lot of people just, you know, pile them all into a folder and they don't put them within folders within that folder, if that makes sense. But obviously, you know, I've got mine in folders. So, so I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a new folder and I'm just going to call it test and hit enter. In fact, let's go to flowers. I'm going to choose, I've only got one flower file in this folder called flowers. I'm going to right click and choose copy and then I'm going to go to my test folder, double click on that and right click and paste. Okay, so I've just got a flower stitch file within my test folder and I'm going to close that down. So now if I go to, I'm going to do rescan. I'm going to make sure that I'm clicking the main embroidery folder, not any of these others, because my test folder is within the embroidery main file. Okay. I'm going to click rescan and now you can see test has appeared. And when I click on it, there's the flower that I've just dragged into it. And then what you can do, so let's just go back to my main embroidery folder again. And let me just grab a gnome. So let me, I'll just grab this gnome one GES. So I'm going to right click on it and choose copy. Then I'm going to go back to my test folder that's inside embroidery. Double click to open it and paste that gnome in there. This is purely and simply, you know, just to show you for the video. I obviously wouldn't put a file called gnome in a folder called test. Um, it would go in the gnome folder, but I just want to show you so that you know it's easier to see because this is just an, a file I've just created now. So I'm going to close that down. So this time now, I'm going to make sure test folder is selected and I'm going to ask it to rescan and it should just rescan this folder and now you can see that with inside the test folder I've got the two files so you don't necessarily have to rescan your main folder every time if you've created a new folder just add that in or if you've added a new stitch file into an existing folder so if I you know, found a shape that I wanted to keep and I wanted to put it in my shapes folder, I would come over here, choose shape and I would say rescan and it would, it just does it quicker than rescanning the whole embroidery file. So it's, I just think it's a really quite powerful and, you know, useful piece of software and particularly because it's completely free. And as I say, it's available for Windows or Mac OS. There may be other things that you can do in it that I've not discovered yet. You know, as I say, I've been using it probably maybe at least seven months, I think. I can't remember. Let's just go back to our test folder. So in our test folder, I've now got one JEF file and one PES file. But again, if I had lots of files in here, I could choose to filter by, you know, PES or JEF and it will it will just show me and then once I select that file over on the right hand side it then shows you the properties so it tells me what the file name is the size again how many stitches how many colors and then again if I make this a bit this bit a bit smaller and this bit a bit bigger it will show me the 21 colors that are used within this file as I say it's it's worth having a look at you know, rather than looking at your embroidery files, you know, like this, and maybe, you know, because like, for instance, here, we've got GNOME 1, then we've got GNOME 2, GNOME 3, GNOME 3A. You're not going to remember what each one of those files looks like. But if I go to my GNOMES folder, and I click in that first folder, I can see that GNOME 1 looks like this. GNOME 2 looks like this and GNOME 3A looks like this. 
So it's really useful. And, you know, coupled with the fact that you can then select a file and transfer it to your machine via your USB stick directly from within here is a time saver. But again, if you wanted to open it in a piece of software that you have installed on your computer, so for instance, for me, that's M Brilliance. If I right click and choose reveal in folder, it shows me where that folder, where that stitch file is saved within its respective folder on my computer. And then if I just double click, that will open automatically for me in M Brilliance. And I can then choose to edit this, add to this, you know, flip it, do whatever I want to do with it. So I just thought I would share this piece of free software and I hope that you find it, you know, useful. Like I say, leave me comments underneath the YouTube video. Let me know if you've already used it, if you've heard about it, if you've not heard about it, if you're going to give it a try. If you find any information, you know, while you're using it that I've, I've not mentioned today, you know, you can zoom in, you can make your, your pictures bigger if you want to see, or you can zoom out and see more in, you know, the thumbnail at a time. I just think it's just great. I really, I really do love it. Anyway, that's my quick tip video for today. And I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.